All right, now that I got y'all attention, let's get into an honest conversation about Kaylin Clark. I couldn't help but notice your pain. My pain? It runs deep. Share it with me. Yo, what up? It's your boy Chocolate with the Sexy Body. Welcome back to a new reaction video from your boy about Kaylin Clark. Look, all this is not Kaylin's fault. All this is not Kaylin's fault. Everything that's happening to her in the WNBA, they've been preparing for her before she, before her arrival. They've been preparing, preparing for her in college with all the different type of schemes and defense that they was throwing at her. She only lost five games, I want to say. Four? What was she? 34 and five in her last year in college. Y'all understand this girl played 45 games in college. And her last game was like April the 5th. May the 5th, something like that. Well, no, March, April, yeah, like April the 5th. And then she transitioned right into the game, the WNBA game. This girl ain't had no breaks. She ain't had no time to rest. She has been the center of attention for the NCAA and the WNBA. She got it coming from all angles. She's getting phone calls from everywhere. She's getting all these deals. She's getting things that WNBA players have never gotten before. She's only in her early 20s. She's still a baby. There's a lot of pressure that's on this girl right now. So let's look into all these things that are pressuring her. Like she's got a, a LeBron James is perfect for speaking about this because LeBron James had all these expectations on him as a 18 year old and he lived up to all of them. But people say he's not the best. He's not the GOAT simply because of Michael Jordan, which is a person that he'll never be able to pass. He won't be able to pass Michael Jordan because one, he doesn't have six rings. He, he would have to have seven. It doesn't matter if he broke the scoring record because Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had the score record before him and they still called Jordan the GOAT without him being a score leader. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has more MVPs than Jordan. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has more championships than Jordan. And they still say that Jordan is the best. It doesn't all come down to your accolades. It comes down to you as the player. And Jordan was a dog. He was a lion out there. He was somebody that you could depend on. When it comes to LeBron, he's not that. LeBron does not go to teams and make them better. LeBron goes and finds people to come and help him make a team better. It's exactly what it is. And there are a lot of people out there that hang on to their biases. And they don't look at the, what the player is doing to make the game bad. They look at everything around that player that's making him bad. So let's look at that same thing we were talking about Kayla Clark. She was a beast at college, has all these records, but she couldn't get the job done when it came to winning the title. She fell short to South Carolina. Which had a phenomenal team, I might add. A phenomenal team that was able to adjust. See, they adjusted to her and they held that team to 75 points. A team that was averaging 92 points. This is what I was told. <laughs> I didn't know these stats at first, but they was averaging 92 points behind Kaylin Clark, who was putting up 20 plus plus shots a game. In the WNBA right now, Kaylin has only, her, her, the most amount of shots she's put up is 15 so far in the WNBA. And the point she scored from that was 22. She had another game where she put up 16 and she scored 20. So right there, that's, that's, a, that's a major problem. She's not putting up enough shots. And here's another thing. She's not getting an opportunity to put up these shots because of how tough they play in her own defense. Have y'all seen any of her games? Any of these people out there who are fans of CeCe, have y'all really seen any of her games? They not making it easy for her out there. When Dana Taurasi and Sue Burr said the shit that they said, they meant that. They was like, this is not the, w, this is not the WNCAA. This is not women's basketball, college basketball. This is the WNBA. This is the top 1% of college ballers have been spread out through all these 12 teams in the, in the WNBA. And since there aren't so many teams, a lot of them are packed. A lot of these teams are packed with the top 1% from each of those college teams. You guys seen the Aces team? Have y'all seen them? They got the MVP on their team. They also got freaking uh, Plum, who's running around that bitch, shooting up three. She's scoring 20. They got a stacked team. The same thing is going to happen with the Fever, guys. They picked last year first. They picked first and got Boston. This year, they got Kaitlyn. Who are they going to get next year? Juju. If Juju decides to come out, then they're going to be a stacked team. Then you got to look at the coach, right? Because honestly, the Fever really don't have a bad team. They really don't have a bad team. They've been hanging in there with all these girls. Except this last one with the Aces, they got their asses beat. And the Liberty, they got their asses beat. But you have to understand this part, too. They have top-loaded these guys with the best 
teams in the WNBA. And they played the Liberty twice. They came this close to beating the damn Connecticut Sun. They didn't play them twice. They beat the they beat the the Sparks. Right? And then the very next game they played against the Aces. Do y'all understand this girl has played three games in a span of four days? Y'all heard this thing called load management? You see, back in my day, we didn't have shit like that. We played basketball all day. We rip, rip, rip and run all day. We were conditioned to do this. The athletes in this day and age are not conditioned to do this. And I blame all this AAU basketball, all these fucking tournaments and shit like that because there's not enough emphasis on the players and their development anymore as far as their conditioning. You think just because you go out there and play eight or nine basketball games a day, you're supposed to be ready to go play the big game? No. Where's the practice? Where's the teamwork? Where's that part of the game? They don't have that anymore. Motherfuckers are just going to play basketball. They're not listening to the coaches. They're going to get the best athletes and, and put them all together and have just, just have a coach out there just walking back and forth down a goddamn court. You're not really doing anything. The players are out there making this happen. Just like right now with the WNBA, the, the players in the WNBA are bringing in the revenue, not the WNBA itself because the WNBA is not getting behind all these players. It's only getting behind Kaitlyn. So the, the casual viewer, the one who came over there to watch Caitlyn play, they're going to be biased behind her and be like, oh, man, it's everything else that's affecting her, which it is. There's a lot that is affecting her. She has an extremely tough schedule. This bitch got the toughest schedule I've ever seen for a, a rookie. All the best teams in the first seven, eight games, all the best teams in the fucking WNBA. Y'all couldn't find, y'all couldn't give us tune-up games like how they did in college? Nope. Nope. Like Alabama, y'all know Alabama be going against schools like Magnese and shit like that when they first play. They didn't do that for the fever. They threw their ass right into the fire. Very first game. Second game, they got their ass drove by like damn near 30 points because they're going against the best teams. And this girl might be tired. She might be tired when has she had time to rest. Look, in Iowa, they had a scheme prepared for her. They had a scheme prepared for her. When you look at her, how she plays out there, when she's making her three-point shots, she's set. She's not running and moving all around. She's getting set. The ones that she made, she has to get good looks. They're not giving her a chance to get good looks. The defense is pressuring the fuck out of her every time she gets the ball. But she's doing so well in a lot of other areas. She's doing well in her assist. She's doing well in defense as far as steals and blocks. The motherfucker getting at least two, three steals and blocks a game. Look at, the, look at the numbers. One game she had four blocks. But she gives up on defense because of her size. She's only six feet tall. And they are running her ass around. As soon as she get the ball, right, on the inbound, they picking her ass up goddamn damn near full court. They are limiting her touches on the ball. And she needs the ball to score. They're not letting her get it. They meant what they said. These women in the WNBA are pissed. They pissed because this product has been gaining traction for a very long time. And the WNBA is trying to make it look like Caitlyn did all of this. But Caitlyn has a large amount. Caitlyn got at least 70, 75% of the viewership and the revenue that's going into the WNBA right now. Yes, she does. The motherfucker sold out all her goddamn jerseys. They on pre-order right now. The, the, her games are sold out. Every game that you go see her play, they're sold out. Go look at the last game she played against the Aces. The whole building was fucking packed. They had celebrities in that bitch watching her play. NBA players. That everybody came, they come in to watch this girl play because of what they said about it. It's, it has nothing to do with anybody else. Even though they all out there getting their asses beat down too. You seen Andrew Reese? Getting her ass slung to the ground in her last game. These rookies are going through hell right now. And the WNBA players are making it hell for them because they like, this is our product. We made this shit before y'all bitches got here. So these are all the things that Kaitlyn are going through. Kaitlyn is a rookie. One, they learned how to play defense on Kaitlyn. Two, they, they, they restricted her from getting the ball. Kaitlyn has a shitty ass coach. That coach is pathetic to have all those players over there just at the first pick last year. And you can't find a way to make that work. They had the first pick last year, so they're going to lean more into Boston instead of trying to get the ball to Kaitlyn all the time. They want to make sure to take care of their last year's first pick. Right? And Kaitlyn might be tired. She might be tired. She literally just came off of her NCAA career right into the WA. At least some, some people get time to, to chill and relax after the draft. They don't just go right into playing. 
This girl has been playing back to back to back to back to back to back. And we live in a day and age where load management does matter for these these athletes because they are in this condition. And they I don't think they as tough either. I'm, I'm being for real. People of my age, right? people from my era, I don't think these players are as tough as the ones from back in our day. They get hit and fall down. They don't get up. But as my day get hit, fall down, they're not calling a foul for you or saying none of that shit unless you bleeding. They usually allow our players to fight back in the day and they keep on playing. Wouldn't even give you a damn technical foul. <laughs> You're a common foul and keep on playing. These players aren't ready for that. And the WNBA is bringing in that beast. They bringing in that beast from the old days and they pressuring the fuck out of Kaitlyn. And it's harming her game. So this is my advice for Caitlyn. Seriously, this is my advice for Caitlyn. Do what you can, right? Because they limited in your scoring. So you're going to have to show your other abilities. And you can, get, you can dish the ball. You can. You need to become a decoy out there. You need to become a decoy. Let somebody else bring the ball up. Get your ass across court. Then get the ball. When they, slide, when they come down your ass on a double team, find an open player. You got to start using your players because they are not they are not allowing you to shoot the goddamn ball. And she is a volume shooter, and that's how she gets her points. I went back and looked at all her stats in college. The motherfucker putting up 25, 28 shots. She dropping 30, 25. She dropping a lot of points, but she taking a lot of shots, in which she is not getting right now in the WNBA. She only had fucking eight shots this last game against the Aces and scored eight points. That's not going to get it done. That's not going to get it done. They limited in you, Kaylin. They know who you are. They know who you are. You don't think they waiting on Juju too? They, they've been waiting on all y'all. The, the, the players in the WNBA have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. And I'm sorry that Caitlin had to be the one to be the casualty. She had to be the one to be the casualty. They put a target on her back. The WNBA did. They put a target on her back and said, this is the best player in the world, and we are going to make sure that she gets treated like the best player in the world. That's why she's getting everything. $20 million shoe deals. Uh, deals with Wilson when no other NBA player or WNBA player in history besides Michael Jordan has had a deal with Wilson. She got deals with State Farm, right? She has the, it's been paved for her. The road for success has been paid for her since she was in college with NIL deals. She's always made money. Y'all do realize that the concept of money has never come up with her. I bet you she never really just sat down there and discuss money because she's been getting paid since she's been in the damn college basketball. You think she cared about the big three offering her $5 million to go over there and play with those old ass men? That's not bringing attention to the WNBA. Why the fuck would I go over there and bring attention to your shit? I need to go bring attention to our shit, the WNBA. So that's why she went to go play with them. For what was her contract? How much she make? Like three hundred seventeen thousand dollars a year. What the fuck? The WNBA is a twenty billion dollar organization, and that's all y'all can do. That's all y'all can pay this woman. Let me tell y'all something. The WNBA is fucking these girls. WNBA, you ain't good because of WNBA. You're good because of the women that are in the WNBA. And if you keep on trying to highlight just one person, like y'all keep doing Caitlyn, and y'all keep damaging her because they're sitting, they trying to prove a point against her, guys. They're trying to prove a point. And this is what the WNBA needs to do. This is what they need to do. They need to go ahead and put out statements. They need to go ahead and put out videos and media shit that show the punishment that she's getting. And that's why she has been lacking. That's why her... her her, her scoring has been lacking. Her, her shot percentage. That's why everything, they've been pressuring the hell. They got to put that out there. It's a disclaimer. Right now, people just talk about hate. Oh, they just hating. Everybody hate Kaitlyn. Man, they don't hate Kaitlyn. They hate the shit that's around Kaitlyn. It's like the Dallas Cowboys. People really don't hate the Dallas Cowboys team. Like, I don't hate the Dallas Cowboys team. I just despise their motherfucking fans. Because in their eyes, they can't do no wrong. It's the same thing in the eyes of Caitlyn fans. In their eyes, she can't do no wrong. Same thing with Beyonce and Taylor Swift. All those fans have a bias. They have a bias towards the individual and they can't see both sides of the spectrum. It's too, look, there's everybody's perspective. And I, 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 you, I agree. I agree with everybody because everybody has their opinion and I agree with their opinion until I know facts. Until I know facts. And I got on this thing in my last video speaking facts. That what you see out there with Caitlyn is that they are kicking her ass. They're kicking her ass. 
She can't get to her spot for a shot. She can't get open. They D her up at fucking full court. They double teaming her. She's tired. This bitch, this bitch is playing in a, M a WNBA finals game every time she touches the court. That's what it feels like. It feels like playoff atmosphere every time you watch Kayla Clark play. That's too much. She just came off of the motherfucking March Madness. It's too much. It's too much. This is a lot of pressure for this girl. And yeah, she's she going to make her... And, I, and I'm not going to put anything on her. I'm not going to blame her. Like the last video, I'm just going off because I can. <laughs> but I'm not going to put anything on her because one, she's a fucking rookie. She's out there doing what she used to do or trying to do. And they stopping her. They're stopping her. The pressure's on. And Kayla, how you get better is that you perfect all the other skills that you have. Your passing, your passing, your defense, right? They need you to be the spark on that level until you can start getting comfortable enough to start getting to your spot to shoot the ball. Get the other players involved. And then you get your shot. Your game has to change. Trust me, you'll make it. Kayla, you're going to do just fine. All these women, they're going to do just fine. But as far as her... Being that person that she was when she was in college, scoring all those goddamn points, it's going to be a tough journey. It's a tough road ahead for her because they not allowing her to get to her spots. I'm telling y'all, look at this shit. Listen, this is, this is her, her shots going, her shots and her points in the last, her last games. 15 shots, 20 points. Eight shots, nine points. Nine shots. No, 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 I'm sorry. 17 shots, 22 points. 11 shots, 17 points. 16, 22, 14 shots, 11, 8 shots, 8 points. They making it really, really hard for her ass out there. Really hard. And they're trying to prove a point. They're trying to prove a point that the WNBA was great before Kaylin got there. That's what the women in the league are trying to do. They ain't trying to mentor her. They, ain't trying, they, they pissed off because the media attention that they've been getting is not on them. It's all on Kaylin as if she's the reason why the, the WNBA is as great as it is right now. She's not the reason why it's great as it is, but she's the goddamn reason why people are watching. She's the reason why people are watching. And people are getting to see the product and they seeing what they're out there doing to Kaylin. What the fuck are y'all doing? Goddamn, the bitch can't get a shot off. They know. There's a reason. Because they're trying to put a point to her that you are not the reason why the WNBA is good. We are. Don't hurt that woman. Don't hurt her. And, and Anthony Edwards, bro, I don't know. I told you, you need to shut the hell up and just go out there and play. Yo, yo motherfucking game is not equal into what's happening out there on that goddamn court. The, what, the shit that you've been talking, the shit you've been talking, the motherfucker just said this, before this last game, before game three, hey, I'm in shots. I'm going to go out there and take a lot of shots. But you can take as much shots as you want to, but the bitches got to go in. <laughs> they got to go in. Right now, bro, you need to be using your team too. You know how many times I've seen Rudy Gobert open, doing all this shit right here, calling for the ball, and motherfucking Ant don't give him the ball? Ant trying to score. Ant trying to put the team on his back, and it's going to fuck you in the long run. I wish it was people around that were still like Kobe that could mentor these kids and let them know, hey, man, slow down. Let the fucking game come to you. Slow down. You can be the man. But right now, you have to use your players. You got Cat and you got Rudy, these two seven-foot motherfuckers out there, and y'all still can't win these games against these little-ass people over there. And not let's not, let's, um, discredit the Mavs, because they got Luca, a bitch that's a triple-double machine and putting up the easiest 30 points I've ever seen in my motherfucking life. The easiest 30. You sitting there looking at the goddamn Kyrie and how Kyrie didn't score. Kyrie would go out there and score about 29 points. It looked like it was the hardest 29 points this motherfucker razzling and dazzling. And then you go look at Luca, Motherfucker had 33 points. I don't even remember the motherfucker scoring like that. <laughs> so... What you got over there? You got a, a motherfucker who is a champion. And you got Luke who been playing with grown-ups since he was 15 years old. They season and they ready for this shit. And they about to win the title. They about to sweep. Get the brooms out. Get the brooms out in Dallas. They about to sweep their ass. It's a wrap. They are done. Same thing with the Pacers. The Pacers is done too. Well, if Halliburton didn't get hurt, I would give them more of a chance. But Halliburton is hurt right now. You have no chance. Y'all had this much of a chance when he was there. It's set, guys. It's set. As much as I wanted to see Anthony get there, and I don't, I want, let I me mean, be honest. I only really wanted to see Anthony get there because of what was being said about him. People talking about him being as good as he is. And now that I'm watching, it don't look like that. You see how fucked up the media and fans can make things be? 
As much as they talked about him being as good as he is, I ain't seen that this year. I ain't seen no flashes. And the same thing can happen to the casual fan of Caitlin. If if I was a casual fan that was wanting to watch the game because of Caitlin and I came in and seen that game against the Aces and no other games, if I came in and seen that last game she had against the Liberty where they got dogged out, if those are the two games I saw and I'm a casual fan but told all these things about Caitlin, I would be turned off from the sport. I would have because I'd be like, man, they told me that, that she was the best and I'm not seeing that right now. This is what I'm saying, fans. Don't get mad at me. Stop being biased. Listen. Y'all notice I didn't curse a lot in this one. <laughs> I'm trying very, very hard to restrain myself because there's moments where I really want to go off in this bitch. But no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it real so I can keep y'all attention. Because a lot of people be like, hey, man, you curse too much. Like just somebody just said, man, that boy cuss too much. I know I do. Are you distracted by my cursing? You missed every one of the points that I put out there? Because this time it ain't that much cursing, so you shouldn't miss shit. If you did, you just one of them biased people that's looking for me to celebrate Caitlyn at every turn. You're looking for me to celebrate her, but that's not how the world works, guys. This is not a, I don't, I don't fucking deal with participation trophies. Fuck that. I'm an 80s baby. And you got to get out there and show me something. Caitlin showed me something. That's why I'm watching. She showed me something. These games against Angel and everybody else, the South Carolina, these get Juju game coming up there, Brianna games, the people that's in the league, Asia, these people that are in the league right now. I see them. I acknowledge them because of Caitlyn. And we all have to either agree or disagree. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Y'all say what y'all want. If you're watching it because of whoever you said, who, fine. But I'm telling you, from all the people that I've engaged with right now, they're watching this shit because of Caitlyn. Do what you do, Caitlyn. Get better in the other areas of your game because they are restricting you from scoring. Get better. It's all going to pan out. It will. The shit will all pan out. Stop listening to these average ass people. Listen to really like listen to a voice like me because I'm going to give both sides. I'll talk shit about you when you when you fucking up and you shitty and I'll give you your praise when you're out there doing good. I give you your praise. So use your team, Kaylin. They need to get a new coach over there. Kaylin is obviously she looks like she's tired out there. This game, she looks like a deer in headlights out there. I'm telling y'all because she's going against the best. She's going against the best out there, guys. She's a baby. She's a rookie. She's a pup. This is not college. Out there in college, everybody, she felt like everybody was beneath them. I bet she did. She's like, man, I'm the best out here. Fuck y'all. And she walked into the WNBA, and it don't feel like that. It don't feel like that. It's, it's just like when Mario Chalmers had picked up Jeremy Lin full court in the playoffs. Because remember when Jeremy Lin, he was the savior. He's like, oh, my God, Jeremy Lin's the person. And Mario Chalmers, let me stop this shit real quick. Let me D his ass up. Let's see how good he really is. You want a motherfucker to see how good somebody really is? Apply some pressure to their ass and see how they take it. Apply some pressure. They applying pressure to Caitlin. The coaches are not adjusting to this shit. They got the player and the personnel. I guess the personnel, because I saw this video showing all these fucking strength and conditioning and shooting coaches and everything. And this old ass GM lady over there looked like she back from the goddamn early 1900s. Talking about what they're trying to do over there with that team. First, they need to get all y'all old people up out of there and get some young blood in there. Let's run these, run the goddamn ball. Get the ball to K to get her open. Need some young blood in there, bitch. Y'all old. Y'all old as shit. And it seemed like all the old motherfuckers wasn't talking all the shit. All right. No hate. I ain't never got on this microphone and hated nobody. I got on this thing and I spoke the facts. I spoke the truth. And people can't take the truth and it's talking about their favorite people. They can't. They feel like it's them. I need you to take yourself out of this. You're too emotionally invested in this. Y'all are too emotionally invested in Kaylin. Look at the facts. Logic, people. They beating her ass up on every time she get the ball. She's not getting a chance to shoot as, as, as much as she did when she was in college. She just came off of a fucking brutal... I don't, I don't think I even see anybody in the NBA do some shit like that. Three games in the span of four days and... Two of those games was away. Away? What the fuck y'all trying to do to them? Because they got charter flights? Now, nah, look, that's, that's the punishment, bitches. That's the punishment. Oh, y'all got charter flight, bitches. Y'all can make it to all the games. No, we tired. <laughs> Get ready. Let's go back to a commercial. <laughs> they expecting too much. They expecting too much out of Kaylin. They going to ride our ass into the ground. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Even the most sincere hearted of fans will turn on you. All people in life will turn on you as soon as they feel like they're being treated like everybody else. Remember this, Caitlin. 
Remember, it's happening to Drake right now. You can be at the top for so long. And some of those people who feel like they should be at the top too, who feel like they're the best, going to do everything to bring your ass down. Those women who feel like they was the best and what made the WNBA what it is right now before your ass was even heard of, Caitlin Clark, are coming after you. Are you prepared for this? Are you? Because the fans can't save you. The fan, our words can't save you. Our words don't mean shit. When you're watching the product out there, look, numbers don't lie. The eye test doesn't lie. And what I saw out there from the games that I have saw her, she looks tired. They beating her ass up. They not letting her shoot. The coaching over there is terrible. They need somebody that's going to come in there and give this woman the opportunity to go in there and ball. And it ain't fucking coach sides. Get that bitch out of there. Immediately. This is a horrible start. Horrible. What are they, one and eight now? One and seven? They one and something. This is a horrible start when you got two of the last goddamn first round picks. First round pick. You pick first the last two rounds. And this is what the hell you got to display. Get that goddamn coach out of there. I'm not going to put none of this shit on Kaylin like that no more because she's a fucking rookie. But when you do go out there and fuck up, Kaylin, trust me, you're going to get the business. Because <laughs> you have to. I look at both sides, guys. I'm an equal opportunist. If we're going to really, really do... Nah, fuck it. We, I'm getting off. This is it, guys. I appreciate y'all for chiming in. Hey, man, leave a comment. Right? Leave me a like. Hit that subscribe button, man, so we can keep these conversations going. This is what this is, conversations. I'm not up for debate on any of this shit or argument. This is a conversation about what I see. Let's talk about what you see. Let's talk about what you see. Let, like, like I've been asking, like, let me know where you're from in the comments. If you make it all the way to the end of this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment. Let me know where you're from, where you're watching this from. And what you like most about what's going on in the WNBA, what drew you? What drew you to watching this, right? To watching the WNBA? Because I remember back in the day when it was the comments and them winning the first four championships. I've been watching since that long, guys. I have. I'm from Houston. So when people get on there and be talking shit, so all oh, you don't know what you're talking about, you don't watch games, blah, 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 you right. I, I mean, I might not know what I'm talking about in this entirety, but I have seen this shit before. It's been there. And they've been trying real hard to make this a, a, a popular sport, something that could be a household name. Me brought up. It has been. But y'all can't, can't deny that Kaylin didn't enhance that. Y'all can't deny it. Give her her roses, guys. Look, y'all take care. That's my time. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Many more to come. This is the most calm y'all gonna ever see me in life. Next time you see me, I'm going to fuck off. <laughs> y'all take care, man. Peace.